who do you trust most in this life? The person that you know, I, I could call them in the middle of the night and I trust that they would be there. I could call them when I need help and I can trust that they'll help me out. Who is that? You see, God wants us to trust Him like that. Well, welcome to our online service here at Grace Church. We're so glad that you've chosen to worship with us today. Now, across all of our campuses this weekend, we have family services. Now, it's really not much unlike what you have every week here at our online campus because our families are worshiping together. And that's exactly what we do with a family service at our in-person locations. We invite all of our kids into the room to worship with their families. And we do it for a couple of reasons. Number one, we do it because it allows the kids to realize that they are part of the church at, at large. And secondly, it shows them what it looks like to worship together as a church body and as a church. And so we're, uh, I'm excited about the weekend. I'm excited about the service this weekend. So as we get started into our topic today, I have a question for you. Have you ever had someone say about you, or maybe you've said about someone else, they, have a, they really have a heart for X, like they, they really have a heart for the hurting or they really have a heart for sharing uh, Jesus with other people. They really have a heart for uh, those who are, are hungry, for the homeless, but, but they really have a heart for whatever it is. So what do we say? What are we meaning when we say that about someone? Well, today we're going to talk about having a heart for something and someone. And we are in a, a continuing series today entitled God in the Spiral. And it's a, it's a series where we're talking about the nation of Israel certainly being in a spiral. And, and, and kids, if you're, if you're listening, wh what is a spiral, right? A spiral is something that, that happens and you kind of spin and you typically are going down further and further. And think of a spiral slide or a water slide at the, at the water park. And uh, where, where you're going down, maybe it has a tunnel or whatever, but it's a spiral downward. That's what we're talking about in this series. And the nation of Israel has started down this spiral of not following God. And it's a time where they're making poor decisions as a nation. They're making poor decisions as individuals. Their, their leaders are making poor decisions. And so this series is, is about that topic, but it also is about how that applies to us. Because sometimes in our lives, we feel like maybe that we are in the downward spiral. Maybe we have started in a season or we've been in a season where we've just not made great decisions or we don't really feel like we're following the Lord in the way that we should and we're in a downward spiral. Well, today our topic has to do with that. And it's talking about this idea of having a heart for God. Just like some would say that person or this person has a heart for the homeless or the hurting. We're talking about having a heart for God. And we're studying another king this weekend. And this, this weekend's king is King Asa. And we're going to be in 2 Chronicles chapter 14, 15, and 16. And we're going to learn about what we can, uh, can, can learn about uh, regarding this spiral and Asa and his life and the way he navigated his kingdom. So let's pray and we will jump into our story for today. Father, we love you, and uh, we're thankful for who you are. Lord, thank you for the fact that you give us a book that is real, that is applicable to our lives, and that's a book that shows us how we can live our lives for you. And Lord, I pray for everyone listening to this message right now. Lord, you know where every one of our hearts are with you. You know where every one of our relationships are with you. And Lord, I pray that you would speak to each one of us. Would you guide my words? Would you give me exactly the words to say, the illustrations to use? And Lord, would you, would you speak and would you move so that we're different from hearing your word and having heard from you? And Lord, we lift all of this to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, as we get into our topic, let's look at a little bit of background. We have three questions that we're going to talk about, just the, the general environment during that time. And uh, before we get into Asa's heart. So first of all, who was Israel? You think about it, we talk about the nation of Israel a lot. Well, in the Old Testament, Israel was God's people. 
It was his chosen people. And they, they, they were living in what was called the promised land. There was a, an area of, of the world, the promised land, that God said, go to that land, I'm gonna give it to you. That's where they were living. The problem is they weren't following God. They weren't obeying him. They weren't doing what he wanted. They weren't following him. Well, what about Israel's kings? We talked about a king last weekend. We're talking about another one this weekend. What about Israel's kings? Well, generally, most of them were bad kings. Most of them didn't follow God. Most of them didn't love God. And that was the state of the, the kingdom, which brings us again to this series that we've been talking about of God in the spiral. You see, as the nation of Israel were making poor choices, that's when the spiral started. And last week we talked about Rehoboam and how he began the downward spiral with the nation of Israel. And the kings did the same thing. They were spiraling away from God. But the cool thing is that in the middle of all of that, in the middle of the spiral, there were still individuals. There were still people who loved God. There were still people who followed God and who had a heart for God. And one of those people is the king we're talking about today. One of those people was King Asa. And so who was King Asa? Let's talk about King Asa for just a bit. Well, first of all, Asa lived some 900 years before Jesus lived. It's a long time, isn't it? 900 years, it's forever. And King David, you may have heard of King David, you may have studied him, but King David was Asa's great, great grandpa. Okay, so think about your grandpa and then his grandpa. That's who, that's who David was to King Asa. And Asa took over reigning Israel and leading Israel, being king, from his dad, who was Abijah. And here's the thing, Abijah, Asa's dad, was not faithful to God. He didn't follow God, he didn't obey God. He didn't have a, a relationship with God that was good. And Asa was king for about 41 years, a long time. He reigned in, in Israel for a very long time. And even though his dad did not follow God, even though his dad didn't have a good relationship with God, Asa did, and he followed God. And, and God has some specific things to say about Asa. So let's, let's pick up our story in 2 Chronicles chapter 14, verse one. Listen to what it says. When Abijah died, now remember, Abijah was Asa's dad. When Abijah died, he was buried in the city of David. Then his son Asa became the next king. There was peace in the land for 10 years. Verse two, Asa did what was pleasing and good in the sight of the Lord his God. So again, after Abijah has died, he's been buried in Jerusalem. And for 10 years, there was no war. In 10 years, there was, for 10 years, there was peace in the land. Did you catch what God said about Asa in verse two though? It said that Asa pleased God. See, Asa did what was pleasing and good in the sight of the Lord. Asa had a heart for God. He pleased God. So what does that look like to please God? What does that look like to have a heart for God? That's what we're gonna learn from uh, Asa's life today. And we're gonna have three points today. The first two are three things basically that God says about Asa's heart. The first two are good points, good things that God says about Asa's heart. The third one, eh, not so good. Not so good that God says about Asa's heart, but we can learn from all of them. So let's look at the first thing God says about Asa's heart. What, how did Asa please God? The first thing that he said about Asa's heart is that Asa looked for God with all of his heart. Asa looked for God with all of his heart. Now, guys, have you ever lost something that you had to have? Something you had to go look for. Maybe it was, maybe you're on your way to, to school. Maybe it's your homework assignment. It's like, oh, I, I've, I've got to turn it in today. I can't find it. And you are frantically looking for that thing. Or maybe you've gotten some money for your birthday. And it, I, I can, I got to find it. It's like you're, you're after a treasure. Think about how you looked for that. How did you feel? What were the things that you did to look for that thing that was lost? That's what, that's what Asa was doing. You know, my daughter, this has been several, uh, several months ago, actually, maybe a couple of years ago, actually, but she loved slime liquors. Now, I, I didn't know what, anybody know what slime liquors are? So here's the thing, it's, it's kind of a candy, but it doesn't matter if you don't know what slime liquors is, but 
Think about your favorite toy, your favorite candy, okay? And she wanted some of these slime liquors and she, she couldn't find them any place. She desperately wanted them and she was looking for them with all of her heart. Do you know what she did? She called every store in Olathe, every store that might have them. And she finally found them at Cracker Barrel. And guess who got to take her to get the slime liquors? Yep, I took her and got them, got them for her. But she was after those things. That is what Asa did. He looked for God with all of his heart. Looked for God like you would your homework, like you would that favorite toy or candy that you wanted, that you wanted to go after. Here's the thing. God wants you and me to look for him in the same way that we would look for those things that we really, really desperately want. That's what, that's what Asa did. He looked for God with all of his heart. Look at 2 Chronicles 15, verse 12. This is what happened. It says, they entered, then they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord, the God of their ancestors, with all their heart and soul. You see, not only was Asa looking for God with all of his heart, but he also led the nation of Israel to look with God. In fact, they entered into a covenant. Now a covenant, is just another word for an agreement. So they went, they entered in the nation of Israel, in Judah. They enter into this agreement to follow God with all of their heart and all of their soul to seek him. And that word seek means that you try to get something that you really want. You try to get something that you desire. It said, seek God. And then look at verse 15. All in Judah were happy about this covenant for they had entered into it with all their heart. They earnestly sought after God and they found him. And the Lord gave them rest from their enemies on every side. Now think about the first phrase of that. All in Judah were happy about this covenant. Think about that, that phrase. Everybody in the kingdom was happy about this agreement. I mean, think about being at school on the playground and trying to get agreement on what game you're gonna play. It's impossible, isn't it? But the entire nation was in agreement. The entire nation was happy about this agreement. You see, because they chose to seek God, because they chose as a nation and to go enter into this agreement following Asa, because they chose that, God says, you know what? I'm, your enemies are not going to attack you. You're not going to have to fight. You're not going to have war from now on. It, it's pretty crazy, the promise that God made to them at that point. So here's the question for us. Are you looking for God with all your heart? Think about it for a minute. Are you looking for God with all of your heart? Are you seeking him earnestly, seriously? Are you seeking him like you would that thing that you desire more than anything else, that thing that you'll go after, that you'll stop at no lengths to find and to get a hold of. You see, the, the way, one of the ways that Asa, Asa pleased God is that Asa looked for God with all of his heart, looked for God with all of his heart. So what does that look like in our world today? What's it look like in 2022? Well, seeking God with all of our heart, he, do you notice how God's moving in your life? Do you notice the things that he's doing around you and around us? Do you look at the things that he's done in your life and say, I think that is God and you're, you're noticing him. So, so far we've seen that Asa looked for God with all of his heart. But there's a second thing that God said about Asa's heart. He said this, and this again, this is their second, second thing. It's, it's good also, okay? Asa was faithful to God with all of his heart. Asa was faithful to God with all of his heart. So what does it mean to be faithful? What's that word mean? I mean, it means that when you make a promise, you'll follow through and do what you said you would do. It means that when you tell someone you'll do something, that you'll follow through and you'll do it. And when we are faithful, it means that others can count on us doing what, what they asked and what we agreed to. They can count on us. I mean, imagine, kids, imagine if you are planning a birthday party and you've got this birthday party coming up and you've invited your friend to come. 
and you're so excited. You're, you're ready to go that you, you've put all of the, the activities are planned. The cake is ready to go. You've got the, the table set up for all of your gifts that you're hoping to get. Everything's ready to go. You know where everyone's gonna sleep and everything. And your friend has said, yeah, I'm coming. And the time comes for the birthday party, but no friend. Where are they? They don't call. They don't send any message. You, you call them, no answer. They just don't show up. That's not faithfulness. You see, to be faithful means that we follow through so that people can count on what we, what we say that we'll do. And Asa followed through on what he told God that he would do. And he, Asa was faithful to God with all of his heart. And that's exactly what God wants from you and from me. He wants us to be faithful to him with all of our heart. If we tell God that we'll do something, then he wants us to follow through with it. So in chapter, in chapter 15 of 2 Chronicles, in chapter 15, verse 16, there's a section of the story. So Asa is king and there's always a queen. And in this case, the queen was Asa's grandma. Now her name was Maaka. And uh, in, some, in some versions, it says it was Asa's mother. But if you trace back who Maaka was, Maaka was actually the wife of Rehoboam. That's who we talked about last week. Rehoboam was Asa's grandfather. Okay, so Maaka was the grandmother of, uh, of Asa. And she's the queen, okay? Now, in, in verse 16, Maaka worshiped other idols. She worshiped other gods and she makes this idol and Asa says, this is not, this is not what God said to do. I can't, I can't let this go on. So do you know what Asa does? He tears down the idol. He burns the idol and then, okay, now before I go to this next part, I want you to think about your grandma, okay? Get the image of your grandma in your mind and then imagine that she's working for you. The queen was, Asa's grandma was working for him. So here's what he did. He fired his grandma. He said, grandma, you are out as queen because you're not following God. Here's the point. You see, Asa was faithful to God and he followed God even when his family didn't. Even when it was difficult. Even when, I mean, do you think his grandma was happy about all of this? That he took, took down her idol, that he, that he dismissed her as being queen? Probably not. But you know what Asa did? He was faithful to God with all of his heart because God said, Asa, I want you to follow me and me alone. I want you to lead Israel and show them what it looks like to follow me and me alone. And that was not happening. And Asa said, I can't let this go on. And so even at the risk of, of offending or upsetting his grandma and his family, he said, I'm gonna take down this idol. And then he dismissed his grandma. Look in verse 17 of chapter 15. It says, although the pagan shrines were not removed from Israel, Asa's heart remained completely faithful throughout his life. You see, a pagan, that's, a pagan is, just means those who weren't worshiping or aren't worshiping the one true God. The bottom line is people weren't following God. Now remember, they had made an agreement that they would follow God. They had agreed, they'd made this covenant. They were happy about it, but they weren't following God. But Asa kept his promise and he was faithful to God his entire life. So here's our question. Are you faithful to God with all of your heart? Are you faithful to God with all of your heart? Do you do what you say you'll do? Do you follow through? Are you faithful to God? If, if you commit to something, do you follow through with it? If you commit to attend church, do you follow through or do you back out? If you commit to a serving opportunity, do you follow through or do you back out if something better comes along? It, God wants us to be faithful to him with all of our heart. So we've seen that Asa looked for God with all of his heart. We've seen that Asa was faithful to God with all of his heart. Now let's look at the third thing that God said about Asa's heart. Now remember, third thing, not, not so good about Asa, okay? Here's what God said. Asa stopped trusting God with all of his heart. Yeah. Asa stopped trusting God with all of his heart. Even though he was faithful to God, God could, 
could count on Asa following through with what he asked him to do? Asa didn't trust God, especially at the end of his life. So let me ask you, who do you trust most in this life? Think about the person. The person that you know, I, I could tell them anything and I know they'll keep it confidential. I, I trust that they won't tell anybody. I, I could call them in the middle of the night and I trust that they would be there. I, I, I could call them when I need help and I can trust that they'll help me out. Who is that? You see, God wants us to trust him like that. He wants us to trust him. He wants us to tell him when we have hard times. He wants us to tell him when we're feeling down. He wants us to tell him when we're afraid of something. He wants us to tell him when we don't know what to do in a certain circumstance or situation. He wants us to trust him. In fact, this is what he said in Hebrews 13, five. He says, don't love money, be satisfied with what you have. For God has said, listen, this is the phrase, I will never fail you, I will never abandon you. You see, we can trust God. And he wants us to trust him. He said, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. Even if sometimes we are in situations and circumstances and we say, God, I don't know what's happening here. I don't know why you're doing what you're doing and I don't understand it. Maybe your parents are in the middle of a divorce and you say, I don't understand this. But God says, I won't fail you. I won't abandon you. Maybe your relationship with your spouse is not in good, a good place. God says, I won't abandon you. I won't fail you. God wants us to trust him with all of our heart. And Asa didn't do that well. So we get to chapter 16. And Asa, at this point, he's been king for 36 years, okay? He's reigned for a long time. And in chapter 36, there's a guy by the name of King Basha. And he is the king of Israel. And King Basha invades Judah and he sets up kind of a blockade. The Bible says that nothing could come in or nothing could go out of Judah. And so it's like they're trapped in Judah. So King Asa is looking around. He's saying, I don't, I don't know what to do. King Basha, he's, he's, he's got us trapped. We're trapped in our, own, in our own country here. So here's what he does. He goes to the king of Aram. His name is King Benadad. And he goes to King Benadad and he says, okay, here's what's going on. King Basha, he's got us trapped here. He's got a blockade set up and we can't go in, we can't come out. Would you come and on behalf of us, would you take King Ben-Hadad down? So the treaty is, it, it happens, they strike the agreement and king, the king of Aram does just that. Comes in, defeats Basha. But what did God think about all of this? What did he say here? Okay, so God sends a prophet to Asa. And we see what the prophet told him in 2 Chronicles 16, verse 7. Listen to what he said. At that time, Hanani the seer. Now, a seer is just another word um, that sometimes they use to refer to as a prophet. Okay. So, Hanani the seer came to King Asa and told him, Because you have put your trust in the king of Aram instead of in the Lord your God, you missed your chance to destroy the army of the king of Aram. Asa goes to another king to have him help him. Who should Asa have gone to first? Yes, he should have gone to God first. He should have gone and asked God to help him, put his trust in God instead of in the king of Aram. And the Bible says, if you had just trusted God, you could have completely defeated Aram. You could have won this battle and won this victory. So let me ask this question. Do you ever try to figure something out on your own? When all God wants us to do is trust him. Are there areas in your life where you, you need God to move? You feel trapped. You say, I don't, I, this is a battle that I'm not sure I can win. And instead of trusting God, we try to manipulate our way around things and we try to figure it out on our own and we try to get out of the situation or the circumstance when really what God wants us to do is the same thing that he wanted Asa to do. Trust him, turn to him. You see, Asa didn't trust God with all of his heart. Listen, look at, listen to 2 Chronicles 16, 9. It's one of my favorite verses in the Bible is what he says. The eyes of the Lord search the whole earth in order to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. 
He's talking to Asa. He says, what a fool you have been. From now on, you will be at war. You see, God says, I come down and I look throughout all the world for people whose hearts are committed to me and I make them strong. I strengthen them. You see, if you're fearful about something, if you don't know what to do in a situation or a circumstance, or you're just at a loss, you know what God wants you to do? He wants you to fully commit your way to him and say, God, I'm gonna, I'm gonna seek you, I'm gonna be faithful to you, and I'm gonna trust you. Would you move and would you defeat this situation in my life? Would you change this circumstance in my life that I can't control? That's what God wants us to do. So let me ask you, are you trusting God with all your heart? Are you trusting God with all of your heart? You know, maybe you're being bullied. Trust God. And certainly, if you're being bullied and you're being hurt, tell somebody, okay? But it's trusting God to take care of those circumstances. Maybe there's a decision at work that you need to make. Trust God with the decision. Trust Him first. Okay, so the three things that God has said about Asa's heart. Number one, Asa looked for God with all his heart. Number two, Asa was, Asa was faithful to God with all of his heart. But number three, Asa stopped trusting God with all of his heart. So I'm gonna ask you again, do you have a heart for God? Do you have a heart for God? If you're a parent, if you're discipling someone, are you helping your kids? Are you helping your disciple have a heart for God? Are you helping them seek God? Are you showing them what it looks like to be faithful to God? Are you showing them what it looks like to trust God in every circumstance, in every situation? You know, in 2 Chronicles chapter 17, verses three and four, it's the, the next chapter, Asa has passed away and now his son Jehoshaphat is king. And in, in 17 verses three and four, listen to what it says about Jehoshaphat. It says, the Lord was with Jehoshaphat because he followed the example of his father's early years. He sought his father's God and obeyed his commandments. You see, Jehoshaphat looked at Asa's early life and he followed the example of his, of his father. Our kids will follow our example. They just need to be shown. Are we showing our kids what it looks like to have a heart, with God, heart for God? Are we training our kids to have a heart for God? That's what God wants us to do. You know, if you're a believer, if you're a Christian, if you know you're on your way to heaven, are you following God fully? Do you have a heart for God? Are you, are you looking for God? Are you faithful to God? Are you trusting God in everything? If there's an area that you're not, give that to Him. Tell Him, I trust you with this. I wanna seek you, help me see you in my life. I want to be faithful to what you've told me to do. I want to be faithful to what you've asked me to do. Tell Him those things. Maybe you're listening here and you say, I, I don't know that I'm on my way to heaven. I don't know what it looks like to, to get to heaven. What does the Bible say about it? Well, it, it's as easy as the ABCs. And around grace, we often use the acronym ABC. Admit, believe, confess. And it, it's coming to God and saying, I admit that I do things wrong. And most of us don't have a problem with that. I do things wrong. Admitting it to God, I can't go to church enough, I can't read my Bible enough, I can't pray enough to get to heaven. I do things wrong, I know I do. B, believe. Believe that Jesus Christ died for you, that he, he, he lived a perfect life, He died for you, and that He's not dead any longer, that He rose again from the dead. Admit that we do things wrong, believe, that Jesus died and then he rose again. And then C, confess. Confess that, it, confessing is just telling someone something. But confess and choose to follow God. Confess, tell God, I know, admit, admit to him that you do things wrong. Admit to him or tell him, I believe Jesus died. I believe he rose again from the dead. And then tell him, I choose you as my savior. I want you to come into my heart. I want you to be my Lord and Savior. I wanna live my life for you. I'm gonna give my life to you. I want to go to heaven for eternity. 
the ABCs. If you've never done that, would you do that today? If you have questions, find someone to ask those questions, whatever you might have. But please ask Jesus to be your savior today. Let's pray. Father, we love you and I think, I thank you for who you are. Lord, thank you for the, the principles and the stories in your book that you give us that we can live our lives by. And Lord, would you help us to have a heart for you? Lord, would you help us to, to look for you in our lives, to look for you and how you're working? Lord, help us to be faithful to you with our, and our whole heart. And Lord, would you help us to trust you with our whole heart and walk with you? Lord, would you, would you change us? Would you do in our hearts and our lives what you want? In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you again for joining us today at Grace Church. We hope that you were encouraged. If you accepted Jesus as your savior today, please text Jesus to the number on your screen. Or even if you're just interested in learning more, text that number and we'll be in touch with you soon. We love you and we hope you have a great week. Oh,